nailed it. The Dallas Football Cowboys nailed it. Yes, they did. When they hired Mike McCarthy. Hey. You waiting for the butt? Yeah, I'm waiting for your... You're, you're shaking your head like, all right, where where's the sarcasm? Waiting for the sarcasm to drip off like this uh, Daisy Sour Cream Ranch he's dip the, that we're all the eating. Best. He's don't, the best. Don't you worry. Why don't you just sit there and uh, enjoy the spin rate on this curveball I'm about to throw you, okay? <laughs> all right, so when you look back to the 2020 offseason when the Cowboys hired Mike McCarthy, I wanted to look back and just see what other coaches were hired, what coaches were connected to the job even, because we obviously know they hired or they interviewed Marvin Lewis in a total phony fake interview to be completely honest and then they interviewed Mike McCarthy and that was it but I wanted to look back and see who were we talking about as the names that were connected to it and who else got hired at that time so we can compare it around the rest of the league so Hmm. this was one of the lightest off seasons for head coaching moves in recent history there were only five of them that occurred all right let's write them down and here were the coaches that were hired Jason Garrett was fired for Mike McCarthy obviously these were the coaches that were hired in other spots. Ron Rivera in Washington. Joe Judge in New York. Matt Rule in Carolina. Mm. And then the final one. And this Copy is the one, one of Matt Rule. I did. And then this is the one that would, would be above McCarthy. Kevin Stefanski in Cleveland. To be fair, I don't think Stefanski was ever anybody they were would have considered here. Nobody that was ever attached too, too to this Too good job. looking. Yeah, I think that's mainly it. God, he is a good man. Do you really you really get down for Kevin Stefanski? Salt pepper beard, man. I'm a sucker for that. No, oh, that's just yeah, you see yourself in him, that's why. But you but you don't uh, find Brian Dable attractive with his no neck, just no. like you. No. Uh no, but I think when you look at this, there were a lot of people at the time who and Choppy wasn't alone, and I think I like I can't remember exactly what I said, but I thinking back, I'm sure I was in favor of rule. Like, I'm sure I thought Rule would have been a better coach than McCarthy. That clearly did not prove to be the case. I know there were a lot of people who said, hey, if you're going to make this hire, go ahead and get Rivera. Rivera is like a guy who at least will, you know, dig deep. And yeah. he's been to a Super Bowl more recently. Take the ping pong and, tables out. Yeah, <laughs> he'll, 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 he'll change your yeah. culture. And, man, by God, you will be the, the most Boy Scout 5-12 and 12 football team that there is. And 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 you'll win in, in, in areas of life that you're not winning on the football field, and that's what matters. But ultimately, I think when you look at the guys that were hired, this was not a bad decision. Like, no. you come away from that going, we're clearly number two. And, and you can make an argument. A lot of people would probably say Stefanski had a great year. Yeah. But overall, like, McCarthy's Dallas teams have had more success. No, I would argue Mike came out on top of all that. Not over Stefanski. I gotta see Stefanski make it work with Watson. That they get that like part of Stefanski's story is a miracle Joe Flacco yeah. appearance. Well, I still don't know what Deshaun is. No one's gonna have him in their top ten offseason quarterback lists. No body. And McCarthy comes out the winner of all those different names. So when you look at the names then of coaches that were connected to the search. Because I do think that regardless of who they interviewed, they probably kicked around most of these names. By like, the way, real quick, mm-hmm. what are the chances that he hired um, uh, McCarthy over, say, Rule for money? Matt Zero, because a lot of money. Rule didn't. Uh, I do specifically remember talking to somebody at the time who said Rule didn't even get a phone call. They never touched base, and he was very surprised and disappointed he didn't get a and call. And I remember being downstairs in the showroom with KMC on air doing their show down there. Jerry Jones was on, and he was talking about being like anti college. You remember was, that? True, yeah. Which no is weird Lincoln. after Jimmy and Switzer. <laughs> didn't, yeah, didn't want Lincoln, didn't want uh, obviously Matt Rule. I mean, Rule was looking for any way out. Like, uh, I have a. People down there I've talked to, they, he, his wife was not a fan of Waco. And do we know well, Matt no Rule failed it. because of him as a coach or just being with, you know, a crappy he, organization with bad talent? Yeah, he was not. It didn't hurt. He it didn't he, help, I should say. The, when, he when probably you, failed because he turned me down for the Texas Live. I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was about to say, the closest that Matt Rule got to the Dallas Cowboys job was sitting at the bar top telling Sean he didn't <laughs> want to interview because he was – trying to recruit, yeah. you know, one-star <laughs> players to come play for his crappy Nebraska team. <laughs> he was nice about it. He was. Well, I'm just trolling at this yeah. point. But it, it is something where he was – there was a lot of people who felt like he was in over his head in Carolina. That it's just he was not prepared for the job over there. Now, his whole thing was – toughness culture that's what he built at temple that's what he instilled at baylor and and i know guys that came out of that program those programs that ended up in the nfl were like i would do anything to play for matt rule again so people loved him 
there was just a lot of people who felt like this is not a guy who can yeah. make it at the NFL level. He's kind of in over his head. Now, here are the names that were attached. And blogging the boys at the time had a tracker up that was like, hey, here's everybody who's connected, given various reports. And they were linked, whether it be Graziano mentioning, hey, I've heard this name connected, or Jeremy Fowler, or Rappaport, Schefter, whoever, just throwing out names. And let's see if any of these stand out as, ooh, blinking light, you missed that one. That guy definitely would have been better than Mike McCarthy. Lincoln Riley. There's no evidence right now that he is somebody who could lead an NFL program. There's questions about why he can't win at USC. Microphone. I don't know how it's off. I agree. I would not have gone for Lincoln Riley. Urban Meyer. <laughs> no. No. Nope. We saw how that one ended. Mike Zimmer. Nope. No. Gary Kubiak. I think Gary. I like Kub Gary Kubiak. I think Gary Kubiak's got something. But I, I, I don't think you can say with certainty that no. would have been a better hire. I agree. Can't say with certainty. Dan Campbell. That's the one that hurts. That does hurt. Um, look, I, I, Jerry wasn't going to go for that either because he didn't want to. He want, he doesn't want a rookie coach. Ooh, I yeah, maybe not at the time, but like like these it's were the just same like, as Garrett. The, right? these, yeah, the so Garrett coming up through. It, it, it matters when it's somebody who's played in that organization before, I think. Like, I think they absolutely could one day hire Jason Witten to be the head coach of the Cowboys. Oh, he's been a head coach before. And Campbell, when when they asked him, when the, the Lions came to town, I think it was Callishaw wrote an article about Dan Campbell. Uh, it was somebody from the Dallas Morning News, and they had been talking to Jerry and got some quotes from Jerry on it. And Jerry talked about how impressed he was with Dan Campbell when he played here and how highly he thought of him and how he then said, you know, I think Jason Witten has a lot of those traits and has a lot of that. And so it's like, okay, mm. you can already see him connecting dots here. But Campbell is one that... That's probably the leader in the clubhouse of... Campbell's the, yeah, Campbell's done... I think everybody would say Campbell's been a better coach during his time than McCarthy has here. Uh, Matt Rule, again, was somebody who was actually connected here. Greg Roman, oh, who no. couldn't keep his job in Baltimore, was fired as the offensive coordinator there. No, I'd be out on him. Dennis Allen who is currently the head coach with the Saints and has not really nope. done anything. Nope. Leslie Frazier. Nope. I would say no. Can't Marvin, say yes. Marvin Lewis. I, I think Marvin's a really good football coach. I do too, but I think he's he's Garrett. He's the defensive version of Garrett. Fair. Fair. And then Sean Payton. Uh, who is the things Mike looked, McCarthy with better PR. Things guy. looked pretty toxic in uh, Denver this year. That, that, that way he fumbled that Russell Wilson situation. That look that was a really bad PR. But hit. they were eight and nine. Yeah. But they're, they're, they're in the first half of the season, we were anointing him and and saying, you know, this is an amazing job. The Broncos are are players. They're a threat. A little bit of a threat. Not a Super Bowl threat, but right. like they're they're a playoff possibility. And then the Russ I mean, Sean Payton just seems like an unlikable jackass. Yeah, that, 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 that's just what he seems like, you know, all lovable in New Orleans. Hey, he's a Bill Parcells wannabe. That's what he is. I, I will say this. Having that's what you get for dog and Bobby at Radio <laughs> Row. I know you live here. I know you're probably listening. We don't care. Having covered <laughs> the Bill Parcells era. Well, Jerry would never do that again. Never do what? Jerry, when, when, when Bill, when Bill left, there was there was word around there that that. One of the things that Jerry did not like about it was he wants – he doesn't want to have a coach not fun. And I don't mean fun like, hey, we're laughing. He wants a coach he can go up to put his arm around have a relationship with. He doesn't want just an employee. Bill is just an employee, right? He wants a coach that he can have some kind of relationship You think with. Mike is all warm and fuzzy, Mr. Pittsburgh? I think, he could, I think he could put his arm around Mike and have a beer with Mike. Oh, I yeah, I don't think – I don't think Mike pushes pushes back. I, I think Mike entertains it. Bill Absolutely. Parcells. Which I think he genuinely, I don't want to insinuate yeah. anything. I think Mike genuinely likes Jerry. And, and I, I think it's really easy for those two to probably sit down, have a couple beers, chat. Like, like it's. I think it's easy for them. Bill Parcells, I think Belichick would be the same way, and Sean Payton. They could be insufferable. They take themselves very seriously. Oh, I which, think Sean Payton, I mean, you can put your arm around him. They party it up all the time. Might be able the to. The Camus story, Indianapolis. That uh, was, Sean Payton, we know, like, loves to have yeah. fun. And they, I, I think they're close. That was that was actually, I think, the bigger issue at the time. That when you talk to people around the team, it sounded like there was almost a concern 
about hiring a close friend again after what they went through with Jason. Like that they didn't want to muddy waters with mm-hmm. a close friend again. Well, he also, they also weren't going to give up compensation. Yeah. And they and weren't the going to pay. And I think it come, you know, mm-hmm. maybe a frugality thing. Yep. I agree. Which is stings me to say. So we have 14. How pissed do you think Jerry Jones gets driving around listening, hearing him being called cheap? How, how, how much do you think that b- boils his blood? The, the notion, the suggestion that he could be cheap and skimping on coaching settle talent. down just a little bit settle down which it doesn't make sense when he didn't spare any expense for the stadium or the star but that doesn't make sense <laughs> well i mean the taxpayers also didn't spare any expense that's on the true stadium. that's true i i think that i think if there's one area that that, that jerry will it, it's the the quote rick goslin told me years ago what? that when jerry first started the line he gave to the media was he said I got big shoulders. I can take it. I don't care what mm-hmm. you say about me as long as you spell Dallas Cowboys right in your headlines. <laughs> and I think that that's genuine. I think the one area where he probably gets under under his skin a little bit, and I, I totally understand it because a lot of people feel this way, you start making any sort of reference to his money or how he handles his money, I think he, he gets a little uptight there probably. So, yeah, an, an, insinuation of, <laughs> an insinuation of that could, could probably – he he probably doesn't love it. Is yeah. that like no? I've told you before the check I wouldn't write. Well, you you wouldn't believe the check I'd write. But I think just said that. So fourteen other coaches as tied here with McCarthy, and I'm just going to run down the list again really quickly because the only one we had definitively had was Dan Campbell. That's yep. it. Matt Rule, Kevin Stefanski, Joe Judge, Ron Rivera, Lincoln Riley, Urban Meyer, Mike Zimmer, Gary Kubiak, Dan Campbell, Greg Roman, Dennis Allen, Leslie Frazier, Marvin Lewis, Sean Payton. So if I tell you out of fifteen names, you defy you you hired. At worst, the one we would consider third. Mm. And at best, second. Yeah. Yeah. In <laughs> retrospect, you look at it and say, look, you may not like Mike McCarthy. You may feel like they've held on too long. But the initial decision to hire him, given what was out there in the landscape of available coaches, you pretty much hit on the top like yeah. tier of what you were right. going to be able to get. And, and look, I mean, I love Dan Campbell. MCDC, Motor City Dan Campbell. But... Dan Campbell doesn't doesn't coach a position. I mean, he was a tight ends coach. Mm-hmm. He's not the OC. He's not running the offense. Like he's got his hands on everything, right? He is the ultimate CEO. But Mike runs the offense. You could also say though that isn't that what they need? A uh, walk around. Jerry said that. Not, yes. not not just walk around. What you what you for cl- changing his mind again? Yeah. What what you what you've seen in the way that they fall short right. in these things? You need somebody who's going to be time on task and discipline and preparation. You don't need yeah. somebody to drop a game plan. He, he you need somebody help. who's going to be more involved in fifty three people. He would help the mental toughness. I think. I mean, like they, they would. The Cowboys would go in every game believing they can win. Like the, the Lions, even when they're not, they, they're going to be underdogs here. I didn't believe they could beat San Fran. Good topic, Bobby. Thank you. Therapy is working for you. (laughs) Growth and optimism and curveballs instead of just fastballs. (laughs) 